All right, so this next one goes out to all you Asuna fans out there. Your waifu's trash, and so is this figure. Now that I've successfully baited fanboys into flaming me in the comments, let's get this show on the road. Asuna is very blatant waifu bait. She's a rich, hot gamer girl with a dash of tsundere, or in other words, the complete package. As for this figure... This ain't it, chief. When watching SAO, I felt like the series alternated from adequate to terrible every other season. The first season was alright, Alheim was garbage. GGO was pretty cool, and then the After Story episodes were garbage until the Mother's Rosario. So I suppose it's fitting that after a surprisingly good bootleg Kirito, the next bootleg would be TRASH! If you want the rundown on how to spot a bootleg Figma, I did cover a lot of the signs of a knockoff in my bootleg Kirito review. The two most obvious ones that I discovered with this Asuna figure was the lack of a holographic sticker, and the fact that she was placed very awkwardly in the box. I mean, look at this! They didn't even try! Alright then, let's go ahead and crack this one open for the boys. Now, of course, being a man of culture, I do enjoy myself a good pair of thighs. Well, I hope you like eating raw plastic just as much as the fish do, because, jeez, that is just, oh, that's just terrible. This is a problem I noted in the Figma Kirito review. However, in the case of Kirito, it was very slight, and you could only notice it if you looked very closely. But this... There's no escape from this. There's even like weird dents or something in it, jeez. Absolute territory, more like absolute sob story. <laughs> I mean, the paint on this figure in general is just sloppy. Especially on the sword sheaths and the swords themselves. Ugh. The sword sheaths though. The sword sheaths. What the f Frick is that? Oh, and also the red sheath's peg broke off when I tried to remove it from her skirt. Fortunately, the old super glue fixed it, but just. Ugh. Oh, and the joints. The joints. Like the bootleg Figma Kirito, they were kind of stuck when I first tried to move them. Of course, they started moving more smoothly once I got it moving. But unlike Kirito, it was not without a price. The poor neck joint it was never the same after the war. Oh yeah, and it does that. Oh, and the hair joint, it, it kind of does that too. For some weird reason, the left arm's elbow joint visibly sticks out further than the right arm joint. I can't for the life of me figure out why. If I reassemble it the other way around, it looks even worse, so it's not an issue of it being assembled backwards. And if you notice, the joints have very visible middle pegs. Usually on official Figmas, these things are practically invisible even when exposed to the outside. But goodness, even crash test dummies have less visible joints than this. Yeah, the alternate faces, uh, they're there. Oh yeah, but the front hair, yeah, that pops out if you breathe on it wrong. And even though the swords are terrible, at least the effect part is actually decent. Yay! I mean, there's no weight issues, but the swords can be tricky to cleanly fit in. Otherwise, there's no problems. Ugh, I'm just... I, I, I just feel like this figure is just gonna disintegrate at some point. I mean, the first time I moved her right shoulder, this shoulder strap thing was like... I... I'ma head out. And for reference, here's it compared to the Rebel Tech Gunbuster, the Figma Samus Aaron, the Transformers Masterpiece Soundwave, 
and the previously reviewed bootleg Figma Kirito. So, let's just put this thing out of its misery and give it a verdict. As bad as this figure is, I can't give it the lowest score possible simply because it is technically functional. You could probably fix it up with some paint touch-ups and super glue or whatever. It is an alright replacement, and I use alright here in the loosest sense possible, but I would not recommend this figure at all.